My second book is titled The Simplicity Cycle, but it's the subtitle that I really love, A Field Guide to Making Things Better Without Making Them Worse. See, a lot of times we add things to our projects and designs in an attempt to improve them, but the addition ends up making things heavier, more expensive, more fragile, or worse in any number of ways. Similarly, our attempts to simplify are not always as productive as we'd like them to be. We end up leaving out important parts, and the final product is underwhelming, inadequate, or sterile. Whether we're writing policies or writing code, creating hardware or PowerPoint charts, our goal is not to make things that are simple or complicated. Our goal is to make things that are good. We want our improvements to be real improvements. We want to make things better without making them worse. So in this video, we're going to look at a technique for simplifying a design in a way that is productive and effective. Not because it makes things simpler in a superficial way, but because it keeps us focused on the question of value, effectiveness, and goodness. The technique is called trimming, and I use it all the time. Now, there's a trimming quick reference guide that accompanies this course, so you can download the one-page PDF and read it there. You can also read about it beginning on page 157 in my fire book, or on page 61 of The Simplicity Cycle. That's right, I put trimming in both books. It's that important. So what is trimming? It's an iterative design technique that guides us through the process of removing any unnecessary elements from our design while retaining all the essentials. It's a reductive design tool, so we typically use it in the later phases of the work. Now, it's actually pretty straightforward. Just remove one piece from the design and see if you can achieve all your objectives without that piece. If you can, great, leave that piece out. If you can't, then put that piece back in. All right, there's a little more to it than that. For starters, there are several strategies we can use when picking which piece to remove. We can remove an obviously unnecessary piece, the low-hanging fruit situation. That's a good place to start. We could also arbitrarily select a piece to remove and just see what happens. That's not the most efficient strategy, but it's a pretty good way to get the ball rolling, particularly if we're not sure where to start or we're working with a design that we're not intimately familiar with yet. Now, the most exciting strategy is to remove a piece that seems essential. You might be surprised how often you can get away with doing exactly that. And finally, we can be super rigorous and consider every single piece one at a time. The problem with this strategy is that it is slow, and we may need to consider some pieces more than once, because removing one piece might allow us to remove another piece we had previously decided to keep. Okay, so how do we know when to stop? Well, we can stop when we've checked every single piece several times. Or we can stop when the design satisfies our objectives for weight or cost or size. Or we can stop when we run out of time. The goal here is to remove unnecessary friction points and unproductive complexities. We can use trimming to help us hit an objective for weight, size, cost, or some other constraint. It's also a good way to increase maintainability, usability, reliability, and other illities. Now, like any tool, mastery takes time. The more you use this trimming technique, the better you'll be at it. So check out the quick reference guide that accompanies this course or read all about it in either of my books.